Hello, welcome to the Safety Moment with the Safety Chick. My name is Ugochi Bijegu and I'm known as the Safety Chick because of my work in raising safety consciousness. In this podcast series, we bring you interviews with amazing safety professionals, sharing valuable insights and different aspects of safety as it concerns you, your life and your work. This is Safety Moments with the Safety Chick, intentionally grooming a safety conscious generation. Enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome once again to another edition of the podcast. I know that you've listened to some of our past episodes and you've been enjoying what we have put together for you. Today, we have another amazing guest in the house. And this particular guest is special because of the topic she's going to be talking about today. Today's topic is going to be managing choking in children. And it's brought to us by Dr. Tosin Ushikoya. She's a medical doctor with over 20 years in the healthcare industry with varying postgraduate degrees, MBA, MSc, and several courses. Her experiences span clinical management, hospital administration, NGO administration, business management, and education and trainings. She founded Levande Healthcare in 2015 because of her strong belief in the power of information and knowledge to improve the health of people of all ages. First Aid by Levand, the pioneer service of the company, is involved in providing the knowledge, skills, and tools to ensure people act without fear or confusion in the event of a medical emergency to save lives. She has been training on first aid since 2016 and is the lead facilitator in all of First Aid by Levant's first aid courses. Their clients include parents, caregivers, workplaces, preschools and schools, as well as charitable organizations. So you can tell that she's just the perfect person to have this conversation with us on (laughs) managing children with children. Welcome Dr. Tosi Ushikara. Thank you for having me. Awesome. So we're just going to go right into the questions because we have a lot to talk about. So choking is very popular in terms of it's a popular topic that parents are taught, teachers are taught, and even children are taught. So why did you choose this topic this morning? And what is choking? Because I understand that we may have some people that ah, they probably had choking, but they really do not even know what that even means, what we're even talking about. So could yeah. you share with yeah. us what is choking and why did you choose to share on this topic today? Over to you. Okay. So thank you, Godfrey, for having me again. And it's a pleasure to be on this platform. So I chose choking, first of all, because in my wide experience in teaching first aid, and also my experience as a medical doctor, choking is a number one medical emergency we face. Even though I do not um, practice medicine as a sick patient anymore, even with just trainings and your DM is accessible, your emails are accessible, I get a lot of messages of chat saying, oh, my child nearly choked, thank you for what you shared. Oh, your, your post came too late, something happened, I didn't know this. So it's actually a common theme I see a lot. And that's why I thought this was a topic to talk about once you asked me to come on this platform. So what is choking? Choking means simply an obstruction of the airway. The airway is important to take air into the body for the supply of oxygen, which is necessary for living. So if your airway is obstructed, if it's blocked, air cannot pass then how are you going to survive? So airway is important for living, and if choking happens, that airway is blocked and it's a medical emergency. Wow, thank you so much for sharing that. And I'm really, you know, I'm really surprised that that is the top, um, the top emergency that you have been getting because if somebody will say, oh, maybe it's falls or maybe it's um, heat, you know, hot water or hot oil, you know, so it's choking, wow, wow. That, that's yeah, really interesting. Is. Thank you so much for yeah. sharing that. So I know that there are different ways or there are slight differences in how we handle choking in babies, in smaller children, and then of course in adults. Could you please run us through the process? If now someone listening now is saying, okay, if this is really the number one thing that people have been reaching out to you about, please, yeah. know, what am I supposed to do when it happens? Could you run us through the process of helping babies, um, smaller baby, smaller children, and then of course adults? 
Okay, so the first thing in any medical emergency is how do you recognize it? Because if you can't recognize it, then you wouldn't know what to do. Now, choking has two types, or the obstruction is two types. So there's the partial obstruction and there's the complete obstruction. How you, it presents or how you recognize it is different. And, how, and what you do to help the person with either of these is also different, whether in a baby, a child, or an adult. Now, the child and adult is actually similar, so that will come together. So the baby or an infant less than one year and a, an old child or an adult, same thing. So the first thing is what type and how do you recognize it so you know what to do. So partial means, as the English word is literally, that it is, the airway is not blocked totally. Now, you can't see me, but for those that are listening, imagine the pipe. And um, even though that's really not representative of how our airway is, imagine a circular pipe that something has just, you know, cut off part of it. You obviously can know or see if you have something in front of you that there's space for air to keep on flowing. So either, either flowing out or in, there's still a space. So you find that how that presents is that the person or the child or the baby can still breathe, but with difficulty, can cough, but with difficulty. They can cough forcefully because the body is always trying to help itself. It's not going to stay stagnant and say, oh, I'm choking, I'm going to lie down here. No, the body is also going to try to survive. So it's going to be doing things to help it. And the thing it's going to do is, I need to remove this obstruction. So if there's space, Air is also going to be forcefully expelled, trying to expel that obstruction. So the child, the adult, the victim can cough um, forcefully, can breathe, or with difficulty can talk, but it's like, uh, 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 you no, know, they can still do some of those things. They can move. So they will tell you that something is happening. They're probably panicked, but you can see that they are still on top of it. The body is trying to do it. For child, adult, um, baby, you do not do anything for these people in this age, you recognize it as partial, except reassure them and encourage them to cough. You get that? You do not do anything for them if you recognize it. They can cough, they can talk, they can still breathe with difficulty. It just takes a few seconds for the body to try and expel this. So if it's a baby now who cannot generally um, cough forcefully, you see them up. I know you can't see this, but there's a mannequin on my. Um, um, in, I'm holding the mannequin. So if the baby sits on your lap. Just rub the back. Reassure them. Of course, the child can understand you. But you are talking. You know, just trying to see that they can copy me. You open the mouth. If it's a baby, can I bring? Can I see anything? Try to bring it up. Can I see? Is what I said. Oh, not blindly poking your mind, uh, hand inside the mouth, please. If you can't see, do not push anything back by mistake. So reassure the child, pat the back, do not slap the back, do not hit the back, do not give water, do not give milk for a baby. For a child or adult, it's the same thing. Encourage them to cough. Ah, um, Bola, sorry, sorry. Okay, cough, eh? cough, eh? try and cough. You encourage them. Adults, same thing. Let them cough, do not do anything apart from that. That's for passion. Now, in the depth of complete, so the first thing is, how do I recognize it? So it's obviously an extreme of the partial. Now, like using that pipe that I explained, the space that you can see for air to pass in or out is completely blocked. There is no space at all. So you obviously would understand that the person can't cough, because coughing is expelling air. So even if the coughing is weak, it's feeble, they can't talk. They are very panicked. They are putting their hand to their throat, which is a universal sign that I'm choking. Um, they can turn blue if they are, um, they are light, if they can see that. They become limp, they become unconscious, it gets worse. So complete is the emergency because there, there's no air going anywhere. So what do you do for these people? Now, this is going to be a bit more technical, so I'm going to try and explain it. So I'm going to start off. If you notice this thing, and even though I talked about recognizing it as complete, sometimes partial can become complete, even as you are trying to reassure and explain that. So you will not notice the things that I'm saying. Now, what we can do for them, what we call the five and five, five and five, the first aid for um, choking. So it's a baby. I'm going to start off with the baby because the child and the adult are similar. 
So if it's a baby, you're going to get that child out from. Now, understand this. An infant is anybody less than one year. So it could be a baby sitting in the high chair. It could be a baby lying down propped on the chair. It could be an infant crawling on the ground, you know, around where something people are picking up. Anybody less than one year, any child less than one year. So you get that child, okay? You are going to lie that child. Remember, I said again, you recognize that this is complete. You don't do this for partial. So you recognize that this is complete. You're going to lie the child face up, okay? And in, on your lap, on your thigh, so support. Holding the back of the head of this mannequin and place them such that they're like a 45 degree angle down. So the head is lower than the, um, the bottom. So you want gravity to help because in babies too, they choke on milk, they choke on liquids because their airways are really small. So that gravity will also help let the fluid escape. But even if it's- um, Can I just cut you right oh. there? Just hold on a bit. Um, is it possible to um, show that, um, show us that mannequin? I so know, I have a mannequin, but I don't know if you can, you can see this. Yes, maybe. I don't know. Can you see the whole of me? I can see you um, up to your half length. I want, I want the mannequin show that maybe the people listening on the audio version would look for this video so that they can okay, see the demonstration. Okay. So yes. you're going to have to help me. Can you see this mannequin at this point? Yes, I can see it now. Okay, I'm going to stand and show that. But okay. note they are going to be doing this while you're sitting. So okay. you can see the baby is inclined at a near 45 degree angle. Okay. The head is lower than the bottom because you want gravity to help aid it. But okay. because I'm standing, please note that, you know, I told you less, the baby is less than one year, support the head of this baby. Mm. So now, when you're, whatever you are doing, you are not um, um, uh, making things worse. Yes. So the baby is lying mm. at a, an angle. Now, actually, she starts from the back. So I was the one that was a victim. So we always start with the back slap first. Now, let me explain something before I stand up. There are two things you're going to do for this baby. Back slap and chest thrust. Okay, so I'm starting with chest thrust, but ideally you should start with the back slap. Now, the back slap means that you are locating the place you're going to hit at the upper back of this baby. Mm -hmm. Still inclined at a near 45 degree angle on the back, on the lats. So they're like this, you're supporting the head and you use I think I've lost your best. Let me hear you back. I can hear and see you. I know I can't. So I'm trying oh. to see you. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I will be much better seeing you. Good. Fantastic. Okay. So your heel is called the back slap. It's the heel that is the measure of the force you're applying on the upper back. And you are going to hit this child firmly because this child is tiny if you don't do the right thing possibly. One, two, up to five. Because this baby is kind of turned over, you can't see, you are going to give the five back slaps first. That slap is trying to vibrate the object that is lodged in that throat, in that airway, such that they can you know, kind of shake free and come out of the mouth. So gravity will also help. So again, five back slaps. One, two, three, four, Five, what's holding? Then you turn this child carefully, look in the mouth. You want to see if anything has come out that you can easily bring out mm. because you do not want to go in blindly. So if they do, if you do that again, and you see that there is no anything there, and the child is still in distress, is still limp, is still choking, is still, you know, it's not responding, still uh, not coughing, you do what is called a chest thrust this time. So it's still the same 45 degree angle. Now the child is face up. Mm -hmm. Using the nipple as a landmark, you do use two fingers on the breastbone of the baby. It's kind of similar to doing CPR, just in a different way. So you understand CPR before, you know, but it's not the same thing. But you're using two fingers on the breastbone, please. That's the middle bone that is on the, in the chest. Using the nipple of the baby as a landmark, just go below. And possibly press it one, two, up to five. So it's the five and five back 
slap and chest thrust. So it's a chest thrust for a baby. You do that five, and if you don't see any relief, turn back again. So you alternate it. Five again. When you look up again, check. Is there anything? Bring up. You continue to do this, and if the baby doesn't respond and becomes limp and unconscious, if he was conscious before, you need to start CPR. Now, you have to start CPR for this child. Do CPR for at least two minutes before you send for help. We are going to stay with this baby at this time or this infant until you get to a point where you know I now need something. So try to remove the choking and the obstruction, then do CPR if the child becomes unconscious. That's what it's for. Mm. Wow, wow, wow. This has just been so, so amazing. I really like how you've broken it down. You know, you've explained so that anybody, anybody listening right now to us knows exactly how to go about this. And I know that um, we're still going to talk about the adults because we, yes. this was and, child, child, child. And, baby. Mm. and I think it was really good, we really emphasize on this baby because many people might have an idea for how to manage the adults, but you know, baby can be a bit tricky because if you, oh, yeah. these babies are really small, what do we do? Yeah. So thank you yeah. so much much for even showing with real examples and then there was something that i really mentioned which is the importance of being able to even identify what kind of emergency because when yeah. you identify you are able to know what do i need to do now or what do i not yeah. need to do and then you also Absolutely. talked about don't just um open and start um going around blindly, going blindly there yeah you need to see have to whatever see something yeah. Yeah. yes so that we don't go and start trying to do what they did not send us to do. Absolutely. So dangerous. So dangerous. So I would say this here. Once you've had to do this for this child, that you try to relieve the choking, a baby, an infant, even if the child got better and was feeling okay, the obstruction was released, my advice is that you should still seek medical care. Because the airway is small, you just mm. want to be sure that everything is okay. Yeah. Take medical care if it's a baby if you believe the obstruction. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. And mm -hmm. then if it's an adult or an older child. Okay, so if it's a child or an adult, it's the same thing. Only thing that's different for an adult is the position you're going to be at because an adult is obviously taller. So it's still the same five on five. It's still the same. Am I sure it's partial or is it's um, complete. So once you recognize that we're incomplete, oh, this child is um, choking. You, the child, now, for instance, as an adult, a two-year-old is a child. I can't do everything comfortably unless I'm at his level. So I will kneel down to his level, or I'll bring the child up to my lap. Give me a second, please. I think it's... Let me, I thought I put it off. Excuse me, but I'm sorry about that. Wait, I just quickly put it on. Okay, so a child is um so you want to be want to, to do the maneuver technique comfortably. So either the child you go to the child's level on the floor or you bring the child to your lap. So I have another mannequin here. So this is a child mannequin that means looking like an older child. It's still the same process of back slaps and um thrust. Only this time it's called an abdominal thrust and not a chest thrust as in the infant. So you get the, um, the child, you lean the child towards um, a bit. You want there to be sort of gravity too, but not as extreme as it was for the baby. You also want to support this child. So I'll say the same thing for an adult, but I just want to emphasize it. Because in the process of doing a back slap, you don't want to hit this child that goes to hit his head somewhere else or falls in the ground yes. and we're not dealing with another problem that we don't start with you can imagine yeah because in your panic you can start doing and all doing all sorts of things so that's always my thing support that child so you stay by the side so even if there's a child on your lap on the floor the child will be kind of like perpendicular to that child lean the child forward back slap too on the back upper back too so even though I say back slap, sorry, but normally I actually call it back slap because I want people to understand it's open-ended, but the literature says back blows. Please do not make a fist. That's not what we're saying. It's the heel that you're using to apply the force, upper back, as hard as you can. Now, fist, back pain, and dying, they are two different things. So please apply this <laughs> very deliberately, deliberately, I beg. So after you've done that, you check the child again. Usually, the thing might come out, you might see it, or you look at the child and say, okay, 
this child is still in a, um, this child is still obstructed. Then you go behind the child, okay? In going behind the child, what we are trying to do is what is called the abdominal thrust or the Heimlich maneuver. I will say that in some countries, they don't even want you to do the um, um, abdominal thrust again because they feel people are not doing it properly. Actually, mm-hmm. promote back slaps more. Well, I teach both because who knows which one will work. But your first yeah. thing is always a back slap, please. So your landmark is that it's between the navel, the place of fist, between the navel and the upper ribs. You do not want to do it on the chest, even though you know, your mind is that, oh, it's choking here. That's Emma applying the force on the chest. You can break things here. You are trying to generate that force from the abdomen and create that you know, pressure that will just expel that thing. So you put your makeup fist. Usually I tell people to feel for the navel so that you know that's a landmark. Make a fist, go above it, bring the other hand right and push in and up forcefully. It's not a pleasant uh experience even in trainings and you're doing that people are not finding it funny so we use this best but in real life can you imagine how much of the pressure you are bringing and that should actually bring out the obstruction so you are going to do this up to five times too so you're alternating after the five you don't say anything you come back again you check go back again to back slap and you alternate again with abdominal thrust that should usually should do the trick the trick really it should you should have expelled yes. that but if they become unconscious lay them down flat on the floor and do cpr for two minutes before you call for help okay so that's for child any question on child um, no, I think that was quite straightforward. And I also like the fact that you're emphasizing that you don't just do it continuously. You do no. the five back slap, you monitor, you check. Yeah. Then you do the, the abdominal thrust, you check. Yeah. Then you, yeah. so, so that you, um, you are not just doing things and you're going, <laughs> going, no. You keep monitoring so that you are sure yeah. there is anything Absolutely. and then you know the next set of actions to take. Thank you so much yeah. for that. Yeah. Mm. So for adults now, it's essentially the same as the child, only that now you are the level usually of that um, person. So same thing, you stay at the side, support this person, male or female, let them lean forward a bit because you don't want to be hitting them and they go and hit themselves. Upper back, heel of the um, your palm, hit upper back again, firmly, firmly up to five times. If after the first two times, if something goes and the obstruction comes out and you have stopped. So it's not as if I must give five blows for any of them. Yes. It's yeah. up to, then if the fifth one, it doesn't make a difference, you know, to go behind the adult, do the abdominal thrust too. Feel for the navel, make a fist, go above that navel and make sure you are not on the rib cage. Bring the other arm in front. So this is the fist you make. So I'm right-handed, obviously. So my right-handed will be in front. So it depends on what you are. There's no particular one. Just make a fist, bring the other hand on top, push in and up possibly, and try to see that that expert, um, obstruction comes up. You'll be shocked that, and I like why that up to five, because if you don't have the first one, because people are usually tentative when they are doing it. So you know that the next one, I better do it harder, because this person might just die on Yes. Yeah. And if the person now becomes unconscious, it's CPR. You can't do, for somebody who's unconscious, you can't do back slaps. You can't do abdominal thrust. You can't do chest thrust. By the time somebody's unconscious, it's CPR straight. CPR straight. Yes. Thank you so much for sharing that. And it's good that you've also mentioned that there's a level you would get to this, something you would see, and you know that, okay, this is not um, the choking maneuvers we're supposed to do. We're heading straight up to CPR. So I just want you to share with us, because I like how you've really explained with real examples. We can all see, we can all hear with the steps to take if we find ourselves in this situation. Yeah. So have there been examples? I want you to share with us real life experiences to bring this home to everyone listening today. Have there been examples where CPR, um, sorry, the choking maneuver wasn't done properly? And then it either led to injury or death. Have there been such examples either in Nigeria or other parts of the world? So, so that people can see why it's really important to get this right. Could you share with us maybe some stories or real scenarios? Okay. So in talking for it, let's say in Nigeria now, because we're not pre, we're not there with them when they are doing it, 
I wouldn't say I know whether they did it right or not. But my my experience is that they, they don't do it right, honestly. But I've got, I can't give you a specific instance of whether I did. But there's a story I know of um, 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 a child who um, they later found out because they didn't know. He actually swallowed the um, bottle cover, you know, Coke bottle cover. Yeah. And that one was stuck there. And I, they were, you know, Honestly, the first thing to do, they start doing is um, trying to make the child vomit, giving them palm oil. They don't do it right. So, I, but it's, you know, when you, they come to the hospital, you're asking, they're not really trying to tell you. So I've never been in a situation where I was there. But what I also wanted to share is that even when you do it right, and this is a foreign example, they did, in fact, I know we have, we had CCT evidence to show that they did everything right. They did the five back slaps, they did everything right. But thank God, if the child didn't, um, the obstruction didn't come out. So the ambulance came, we saw that they took him to hospital, which we know is not to be a certainty here. But what I'm just trying to say is that later we found out that the boy had enlarged torn cells. Oh. So he could easily go in. It wasn't that they got him wrong. They did everything right. There are some other things that stopped it from coming out. So sometimes people do it and, you know, you don't, and that's what we said, up to five alternates. Some things don't happen immediately. Some things, there are other reasons. So it's not that the technique is wrong. It's just that there may be some other reasons that people have made it that way. And that was it. Tonsils, but he survived. Wow. But at least let us all know the basic to do and not be thinking, oh, yeah, the large tonsils, they're not coming out. At least do the one we've told you to do first. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Wow. I'm just, you know, nobody would have thought of the tonsils thing. I mean, if you didn't get to the Who's hospital, about nobody that? would have known. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And see, this is actually why it's also important to be able to have access to emergency health care when you need it. It is. You it know? is. Oh, wow. Is. Uh, I'm happy to hear that. Um, no life yeah. was lost. Yeah. Okay. So apparently choking happens more often than we think, because you know. based on this information you've given us today, um, it's, it happens more. How can we get more people to know about managing choking? And in fact, taking it to the, um, the, wider, the wider lens, first aid. How can we get more people to acquire first aid skills? Because apparently everyone needs to, it's a survivor. Everyone needs to have first aid skills. So yeah. could you share with us um, how we can get more people to get these trainings and all that? Because the truth is we keep having too many avoidable accidents affecting yeah. children in this part yeah. of the world. So how do we ensure that these things are greatly reduced? Okay, before I even talk about them first aid chains, I want to use this opportunity, and that's what I know that's what you also have on you talk about a lot. And safety to me is always first aid for the uninjured. I, I honestly live by that. I teach that that if we practice safety first, the times you would need first aid techniques and skills, even as important as they are, will be reduced. Because sometimes there's some first aid, you know, first aid is just help until medical care comes. But we live in a society that the medical care is not in the next 10 minutes. It may not even be in the next 20 minutes or next 30 minutes. So why should I put myself in a situation where I need medical care and I know the first day I can't get it? So the best thing is actually to prevent this thing happening. Yes. So it seems counterintuitive, oh, learn first aid. But my own is start with the bit, let these things do not happen. So for instance, see this choking thing now that we're talking about, mm -hmm. the babies, the child, children, you need to be more involved. You need to be there when the child is eating because food is one of the most common reasons why they choke. You need to check that there's nothing on the floor. You need to, you know, safety conscious in the home at meal times in the um, crutches because children are also dying and, uh, and crutches. Of, I think there was a case of somebody, it was a daycare, I can't remember. Well, somebody told me that story. So it, it's everywhere. So if we think yeah. prevention, it lessens the chances so that we don't get these tragic stories. But then we need to learn first aid. Anybody, and I'll talk about for children more because it's actually, as you, as you, point said, you said, and I also said, it is actually very common. So for the adults now, for instance, yes, it happens. People die from choking in Nigeria too. I hope we all understand that anybody listening. It's in fact we've been contacted for a first aid training because somebody died in a canteen at the workplace. Uh -huh. So they died. Choking, we just don't hear about it, it's common. But let me leave the adults aside. 
children's own are more common than we know. So anybody taking care of a child, you're a parent, you're a caregiver, you're a babysitter, you're a grandmother, you're a daycare owner, you're the staff there in the preschools, you need to know these skills. Even if or anything you learn about choking and CPR, there's many first aid skills you can learn, but you should be able to learn it. And we, they are available. So now there's, a, there's this thing about oh, learning it online, even though that's what we offer. For instance, we offer first aid training in a wide variety for knowledge, for certification. Google First Aid by Levande, our website, you can find it. But what I want to emphasize is that take the practical seriously. It's a different thing, I've seen it on Google. Most people think they know. Until you do it, you do not know. And I can't emphasize it enough. (laughs) It is different from watching it on the video. It's different from watching it on Google. It's different from watching it in a class. Somebody's doing it, you think you know it. You can't kneel down by this person or stand up behind and do the choking. Two different um, scenarios. So for us, for instance, we try to make it because I've been teaching first aid for six years now. This is my, no, fifth year, 2016 year. This is my fifth year. Yes. And when I started, it was actually for children I started for. I didn't want to, I wasn't interested in the workplaces because I, for me, it was about the children. I told, I don't know if, I think it's, I don't know if it's a wide thing. I started teaching first aid for personal reason. So it was for children I was more particular about. It was for the babies, let people understand what to do. And I found out that people are not, they, they take it for granted, they know what they can do. So even if I make it convenient for you, because I know I can't come, oh, it's too long, the training, oh, what can I, okay, do it online. But we'll still come for the practical classes. That's what I want to emphasize. I don't know if I answered the question, because I know I went on safety. I was really particular about that. <laughs> No, no, no. But you actually emphasize, which is, and I like that you really emphasize the practice. And, you know, as you were talking about the practice, I was reminded of something. So I used to work in aviation, right? And every year we would go back to class, we would do the um, theory part, read, write exams and all that. And then we'd have the practice sessions. What do you do if a plane lands, a plane crash lands on land? And what do you do if it's, um, it ditches, that's crash landing on the water? And we'll do those drills, NCA would come. And, you know, sometimes people would feel, ah, all these things is just stressful because we kept on doing it every 12 months. But guess what? I think sometime in 2014 or 15, I can't remember which of the years now, I had an emergency on my flight. We, myself and my colleague, we were just in the middle trying to do something and we just saw the mask drop. Now, because wow. of all those practice, we just looked at ourselves and it was almost as strong as to press the play button. We just moved into action, did everything, stored, sat down, strapped, everything. We're already calling out to the passengers to do, you know? And after that whole incident, when I reflected, I knew that it was because of practice. It it's one thing for you to do theory trainings yeah. and all that there's yeah. one thing for you to be immersed in a situation even though it just okay, not the exact but because your mm. body stepped into that situation it does something to you and the day Absolutely. you find yourself in a real situation you are quicker to act so thank you so quicker. much for emphasizing it yes yeah. and she has yeah. mentioned please um google first aid by levande they have several trainings so you just check and even if you choose the online version, when you are done, please show up physically to have the physical. Please, please. <laughs> Seriously. I thank you. You can't have imagined if you were on the plane with me the day when I had that oh, thing. Oh, I can't. I can't. Because even when the stories came out in the press and um, the passenger said that the professionalism of the crew, you know, gave them confidence. Yeah. And yeah. I knew that we may not have been that professional if we had not yeah. been and train the way absolutely 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 training is super critical and so i've really enjoyed this conversation with you thank you i have to (laughs) oh yeah so uh i know that there are people who are listening and they're like okay i would really love her to come and train my teachers or my staff or even maybe children because we also um uh propagating training the young ones early so that they know what to do how can you Contact you so that you can provide the services to them. Okay, um, with, with the COVID era, things kind of changed for us a bit, so that's why we went on to emphasize the um, online parts. But honestly, contact we on Instagram at firstedbylevande.com. I know at firstedbylevande. Sorry, <laughs> just send a DM. I'll respond, or somebody will. Where um, our phone line is 
0817-732-1761 or send an email to info at firstaidbylevande.com.ng. What you want to tell me is what exactly you need it for. Because as I said, the different, most people just, I want basic first aid. And there's no such thing as that. Or I just want um, first aid training. It's actually tailored to what you are going to use it for. Mm. Are you going to take care of a child? Are you going to take care of an adult? Are you in the workplace? So it, it differs. Are you looking only adults? Now for first aid for, for teachers, for instance, because that's my, my old first love and we you know for the children. There are actually two trainings. So one is also how to take care of just the children. So there's a training for that. But I like the one for teachers because it helps you understand there are adults in that workplace too. So there's training for you to be able to handle if it's an adult. Now for any training at all, just contact us there and we'll have you ask you different questions. Now the idea is to do a certified training. A certified training means it's intensive, it's practical. There are so many assessments you are graded in. There's the theoretical part. We, and it's a minimal class size so that we can do. But we find that most Nigerians just seem to think that it's not that important. So we are doing what we call a first aid demonstration. So we have as many of you in the class. Everybody's listening. All of Some of you can come to the class. It's not the ideal, but at least we are starting somewhere so that Nigerians understand. So whatever you think that will suit you at this point in time, we are available to meet that need. Awesome. So do you have final words for us based on the conversation we've already had so far today? I always have plenty of words, so I don't know what to say now. So honestly, if you give me a chance, I talk. I think for me on this, um, because I'm coming at it from um, safety for children, uh, and that's why I spoke on choking. Um, I want um, people to understand that children... How will I would like explain this? Children need a lot more than you think they need. There's so much that impacts on them, health-wise, environment, academic, and everything. And I want people to look at, if I take care of the health, what about the environment? So even though I'm a doctor thinking of more in terms of health, please understand that the children need a lot and find time to give them what they need and meet their needs wherever. So that's my final word. And it's not really first aid, but please take care of these children out there, please. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for this super, super enlightening episode of the Safety Moment with the Safety Chick podcast. Thank you for honoring our invitation. Thank you for Thank sharing you. so practically. You know, one of the things we always emphasize here is that as people listen, they should be able to pick out something they can implement right away. And with Absolutely. the way you have explained it today, everybody now knows how to manage stroking, you know, and they are now seeing why it is important to go the extra mile and get more training on first aid. Absolutely. Thank Absolutely. you so much for sharing with us. And to all our amazing listeners, we hope that you're going to be back in the next episode. And of course, share this with as many people as possible. So thank you, thank you, and see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you for listening in on this episode of Safety Moments with The Safety Chick. I hope it's been a good one for you. Feel free to leave a review. And if you'd love to get information on when the next episode drops, join our Telegram channel at t.me slash The Safety Chick. Chick without a K, just C-H-I-C. So t.me slash The Safety Chick.